All right. Hello, everyone. How are we doing today? Okay. All right. Um, I see someone sending me a personal DM. So don't worry, we'll address that. Okay. Over the course of this session. Well, uh, all right. So um, welcome to today's session. My name is Ahmed Suleiman, and I'll be your host for today. If you've seen me before, if you've been in our session before, type yes in the chat. Let me know the old, the old uh, boys and girls on the call. You've been in our, one of our sessions, you know, maybe in the past couple of days, you've been in one of our sessions before. Let me see a yes in the chat. Let me say yes in the chat. Um, come and also confirm if you can hear me loud and clear. Okay. All right. Amechi Modupola has been in our session before. Okay. So if you are new, you're seeing me for the first time, or you're meeting analytics for the very first time, I also want you to type type a new, new, type new in the chat. Type new in the chat so I can know the I can know those who are meeting us for the first time. And okay, Abba says new. Um, Lisanya said new. Abayomi new. Kendi new. Charles Iberi. All right, fantastic. So let's keep let's keep our responses coming in. Um, while I take us through today's session, it's going to be a fantastic one. All right, this may be your first time even being in a maybe in a tech um in a tech you know um program okay maybe your first your first ever master class you know you'd see how you know this looks like okay so today what we are going to be doing is you know something very interesting and I'll be taking you through the entire um the entire program okay so if you notice the title for today's session okay very interesting stuff it's one of the one of my personal experiences that I love to share with people, especially uh, people looking to get into the space newly. All right, so you may be looking to get into the space newly. So I'll be sharing uh, um, my experience with you today, and it will be on building and deploying, you know, a report that is automated, fully automated, and it's done. It's automated in such a way that it solves this specific. Problem and we'll discuss that in detail um, when we get there. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay, and once you see, once you can see my screen, you type a clear in the chat. Once you can see my screen, I'm not sharing yet. But once I share, I'll notify you. But I'll also need you to let me know once you can see my screen. All right, so let me know if you can see my screen. Type a clear in the chat if you can see my screen. Okay, fantastic. Okay, thank you for that, Priscilla. Okay, Abba says yes. Great. I believe we can all see my screen as well. Okay, clear, clear. All right, fantastic. Great, so um, prepare yourself for a great time today. So just sit back, sit back, relax, and you know, follow me. Um, and I'll walk you through, we'll brainstorm, okay? And you'd see what the problem we're going to be solving is today. And, you know, how I was able to um, solve the problem, okay, as a financial analyst. So um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be building a report for a particular organization, all right? And um, that's going to compare, you know, their, their budgets, their actual amount spent. You know, every organization, always have a budget, even an entire country has a budget, okay? So the budget is a plan, but when they actually engage in some projects over the course of, you know, a, a specific time frame, they get to spend sometimes less, lesser than what they budgeted, and sometimes they spend more than the budget. So we want to, you know, help solve another specific problem in that aspect, um, in the aspect of reporting. All right. So, but first, for those of us who are meeting us for the first time, you're meeting Tenalytics first. Okay. What we do is very simple. Okay.
Okay, what we do and what we stand for is very simple. All right. So over the course of my own personal experience working with conglomerates across the globe, across the globe, I discovered that I'm either the only black person in the room. Okay, in my team, I'm either either the only black person in the room, or just a handful of us throughout the entire organization are black people. Now, it means that people people of the black community, Africans, Nigerians, Ghanaians, um, South Africans, we find it very difficult to get into the, to the tech space. And that's where we come in, here at Analytics. So we help people of the black community get into the tech space, you know, in, in, in a way that is easier than what we, what even myself experienced, all right? So and I'll tell you more, more about myself when I get to that last slide. You know, I'll tell you exactly how I also got to, you know, transition. I wasn't born a tech bro, okay? So I also learned it the way you are looking to um, learn it. I also transitioned into the tech space um, from an engineering background. So I'll tell you a bit about how that happened. Okay, but I didn't find it easy. And that is where I come in. That's where analytics um, come in to make it easier for me to get into the tech space. And we help people get into several, um, you know, career paths, including data analytics, um, HR analytics, financial analytics, which I'll be showing you is a, a snippet of what it feels like to be a financial analyst today. Um, HR analytics, data science, data engineering, and we have some other interesting programs in the pipeline that we are looking to bring on board um, later down the year. And we do all of this, okay, by onboarding, you know, um, facilitators who's who's who are you know experts in their own right, okay, working for the biggest or the best organizations across the globe. Talk of Apple, Microsoft, Alfa Romeo. Um, you know, by myself specifically, I worked with. I had the opportunity to work with Alfa Romeo. If you're wondering, um, which company is Alfa Romeo? It's one of the largest Italian car brands, all right? There used to be a sister organization with Ferrari up until 2016 when Ferrari became a standalone organization. So I had the opportunity to work with them, work specifically their supply chain team. I'll give you a bit more detail about that later. All right, so we're bringing on board facilitators, experienced professionals from these organizations to come on board and share their own experience with you in a way that makes it easy for you to hit the ground running when you finally get a tech job, your first tech job, all right? So that has been the, the hassle, all right? People people learn, you know, tech, oh, I learned in this particular bootcamp, in that bootcamp. By the end of the day, you either are not confident about your skills or you really don't even know what it feels like, all right, on the job. So we, we are here to give you that feeling of what it feels like to be on the job, how to solve problems on the job. And by that, you'd um, become a tech professional yourself. So it's totally practical, okay? Practical, hands-on practical sessions um, that we leverage to, you know, get this done. Now we have an amazing, amazing founder um, goes by the name of Deza Suleiman. You know, he's a fantastic um, data professional He's worked as a data analytics um, um, expert, you know, across the globe as well. Has, uh, you know, close on a decade of experience in the space. All right. So uh, he's also worked as a data analyst. He's worked as a business performance analyst. And, you know, he's had the opportunity to work with um, Sahara, Sahara groups, okay, as well as a data analytics consultant with FITC. So like I said, he has close on a decade of experience and, um, you know, he's worked cutting across several sectors. Okay? He has experience cutting across several sectors, including automobile, uh, supply chain, sports, energy, oil and gas, and the list goes on and on. And he's been able to, you know, mentor and train close on 10,000 participants in date. And yeah, you get this slide after this after this particular session. And I would want you guys to connect with Adeza on all his social media handles. 
All right. So the brain behind the only Adesa is not just is not the only brain behind um this fantastic platform we've been able to set up. We also have Efemena Eko, is the co-founder of Tenalytics. Fantastic professional. So one of the things I love to say, or how I love to describe um Efemena, is that he's one of the only few people that I know personally that has won all the hats variables in the data space. He's worked as a data analyst, he's worked as a data scientist, he's worked as a data engineer, he's worked as a database um, manager, he's worked as a business data support lead, he's worked as a business intelligence developer. And the list is, 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 is you know, it goes on and on, okay? So he's one, think of any hats, think of any hats in the data space, Femini Pro has one that's how it's very um, fantastic professional. So he co-founded Tenalytics alongside um, Adeza, has a vast you know, amount of experience, close to a decade as well. So and when you combine that, you're talking of close to two, two decades across board when you're talking about the founders of Tenalytics. All right. So he's worked across, across uh, multiple sectors as well. And like I said earlier, you would get the you get these slides after the scroll. Just ensure you fill in the attendance um, in the chat. If you go to the chat right now, you'd see my colleague putting a link in the chat box containing um, a form where you, you can fill the attendance. Okay, so fill in the attendance so you get all the resources that we'll be using today, including the including the slides that I'm currently presenting. So do well to connect with FMN once you get these slides, all right? And you have myself, Mohamed Suleiman, like I mentioned earlier, and I'll be your host and facilitator for today's session. We're gonna be doing something very interesting, all right? Very interesting. And I have over five years of industry experience, you know, and that has allowed me to train quite a number of people, okay? Quite a number of people, you know, till date, uh, I've helped close to 2,000 people um, get into the tech space, mentored them, and helped also a good number of them get jobs. And speaking about getting jobs, we'll discuss that also in today's um, session. So I've helped, you know, that's um, much people to get into the tech space much easier than I personally found it. And like I mentioned, um, notably, I've worked with Alfa Romeo in the US. I worked with them remotely. Okay, remotely. So for some of you who want to work from the comfort of your homes, all right, this is the right place to be. So I worked with them remotely, help them solve some of their uh, problems, very similar to um, what I'll be sharing today. I worked for another client, you know, and I've, you know, brought that to today's session to show you what it feels like to be a financial um, analyst, all right? So that's me, and um, we would be getting into what we have for today. But before I present to you what, what the program is going to be like, let me know if you're excited to be here. Let me know in the chat if you are excited to be in today's session. Okay. Use any word you want to use. Describe your excitement. Let me know if you're excited, excited to be here. Let me know in the chat if you're excited to be here. Um, okay, Kate, Catherine, you would see my colleague posting the chat, posting the link now in the chat. Um, so just hang on for that. Okay, fantastic, Modupeola. Um, Alex said, I got you, bro. Um, Abayomi says, super excited. Okay, we, we are close, we are more than 50 on this call. I want to see your responses, okay? I want to see all your responses. So let's keep it coming into the chat. All right, happy to be here, Catherine. All right, Catherine, you'd see, um, you'd see the link in the chat, okay? Okay, someone says, excited to be here again, Mohammed. I'm glad to see you again today, a student in FA. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Good to see you. Um, M F O N. Okay, I'm not I'm not sure what your full name is. Sorry about that. Okay, excited, best place to be at the moment. Fantastic. Okay. 
Okay, OG says Mr. Fantastic. So you pro you probably know you probably um know me very well then. Fantastic. So let's have let's prepare to have a fantastic session today. So what we are going to be doing today will cut across um four different aspects. The very first thing is I'll show you what it feels like to be a financial analyst. One of the problems I've been able to solve so far in my car in my, my own career. And I used Google Sheets. I used um, Google Forms as well as Microsoft Power BI to build this solution for that particular organization. Of course, I have you know masked the data so that um, um, I don't give away the particular the specific organization that um, the, the, the data I used to come up with today's session um, came from. Okay, so now this. Uh, in this particular session, the very first thing is I'll show you what it feels like okay, to be a financial analyst. One of the problems I solve, which is automating a Power BI report. Okay. And then we'll go into how you personally can get started as a financial analyst. So you may be looking to start out as a financial analyst. All right. How do you get started? And what opportunities do you stand um, if you choose? If uh, financial analysis as a career path, we we'll then go into the upcoming. I'll talk about the upcoming program um, coming up on the fourth of May. Starting a, a new program starting on the fourth of May. I'll talk about that, and last but not the least, I'll take you through some more success stories. Okay, a bunch of success stories. Some of um, our participants who joined us you know, just the way you are seeking to join us now and have been able to get those as um, financial analysts. Also, there is a special discount I'm talking about. So you want to stick all the way to the end, and, okay? So, so that you can um, get all of these information handy. Okay, so do well to fill in the, um, is this only financial analysis? How about this time today? All right, we had a session, I think, yesterday. Uh, we had a session on data engineering. And um, if you are in that session, um, okay, if, if you are not in that session, no issues. All you need to do is ensure you subscribe to our YouTube page, okay? Subscribe to our YouTube page, follow us on all our social media handles and analytics, and you won't miss out on any of our content. All right. So, but just to, just to, just to give you a snippet of what it feels like, Okay, joining our program, all right? Many people look at it and say, can I possibly do this, all right? And you'll be right if you, you'll be right to ask yourself that question at, at first, um, but that's how it always seems, okay? It always seems impossible until you get it done, okay? Let me give you, I'll just play, these are two gentlemen um, out of a lot that have gotten jobs as financial analysts after passing Program. All right, but I'll just give, I'll just take a moment, okay, to, um, okay, maybe, maybe after, later, I'll play one of their videos for you. I'll come back here, you tell me which of them you want to listen to. I'll play one of them for you, so you can listen, you can hear from the horses about how, you know, these guys have been able to benefit from our program. So, we'll get started with, what well, with, um, you know, what we have for today and um yeah we have a lot to cover okay let's get started now this particular organization okay this particular organization um was specifically from the energy sector okay and they had branches across you know several different parts of um the UK okay had branches in London um, Edinburgh, um, Liverpool, Birmingham, and Manchester specifically. Okay. And what they do on a monthly basis, on a monthly basis, all right, they do what we call budget versus actual comparison. Like I said, every organization has a budget. Even a country has a budget. Even an individual has a budget. All right. So you would always be on a budget or, you know, budgeting at some point in time. But you always want to know, okay, I had this budget at the beginning of the month. Okay, what did I spend? 
what was the actual amount I spent? Oh, was that able to, um, did I exceed my budget or am I in line with what I budgeted? So as an organization, it's always important to keep track of this specific metric so that you are able to, you are able to, you know, optimize your spending. Okay. You want to optimize your spending. So money should only go to where it needs to go to. Okay. So now, um, this particular organization, okay, this particular organization, you know, they had an they had an issue. They had an issue gathering the data from the different uh locations. Remember, I said they had branches in the different locations, right? So they had they have five major branches. Okay, London, Edinburgh, um, Liverpool, Birmingham, as well as um, okay, fantastic. So um, we'll get into all of that, Matthew. Okay, I can see I can see your comment in the chat. We'll get into all of that, all right? But I want you to focus on the value that we'll give you today. Okay, so let's do it incrementally, and you know, one of these days. You know, you get to benefit from um, one of our programs. All right. Now, this particular organization had a very specific problem. Let me explain how they operated. Remember, I said that they gather reports from these five different locations. Okay. After they gather the um, they gather the data rather from these five different locations, the data analysts, which is who is located in the um, headquarters. That was me as at that point in time. I came in specifically for this project to solve this problem, right? So let me let me use illustrations to explain so that you get my point. So who can remember the five cities? Can you remember the five cities without me going to the um, previous slide? So we had London, okay, I'll call that LO. We had Liverpool. Who can help me with the rest? We had Liverpool. Which one do we have next? Who can, who can remind me of the rest? We had five, London, Liverpool, Edinburgh, okay. I'll just call that ED. Pardon my handwriting, it's way better than this in real life, okay. Okay, man, somebody says Man U. Um, Alex, you probably are a Man U fan, so I'll just put um, Manchester, okay. Then, what's the last one? Liverpool, London, Edinburgh, Manchester, and? Who is taking the last one home? Birmingham, fantastic. All right. I'll just put it this way. So we had these five different um, branches, okay? But the headquarters was in London, okay? The headquarters was in London, all right? The headquarters, everything, all the decision, that you know would be made at the end of the day is made here in London. So the person in charge of the people in charge of gathering the data from each of these locations would send their data via email. They'll send their data via email to the data analysts in the headquarters. Okay, let me put HQ here. HQ. All right, so they send their their data via email to the data analysts in the headquarters. All right, and you know when you send email, okay? When you send emails, um, you can send email. You know, you can send quite a number of different forms of attachment as an email. So you find out that oh, the person um in charge of even generating data in London, send theirs as a PDF. Okay. The person from Liverpool may send theirs as an Excel file. Okay. The person from Edinburgh will send theirs as maybe an Excel file also. All right. Then the person from Manchester would send theirs as a Word document. And um, the person from Birmingham would send theirs as, um, say, a Google Drive link. I'll just say G Drive. Mm 
Now, it becomes a hassle for the data analysts in the headquarters to consolidate between all of these different um, data formats. Okay? It, it becomes very difficult. And even after trying, after trying, and when I say after trying, this takes close to 75 hours a week. Let me put it, 75 hours a week at the, at the very minimum. It takes 75 hours of work, okay, to get, to get the reports done. It takes 75 hours. And this is done once in a month, only once in a month. Well, you know, after a month, after the course of a month, you you know, that's when you can, you know, retrieve the monthly data from the different um, branches. And then, you know, start to try to make sense of it. Okay? 75 hours. And somebody saying, Benjamin is saying three days, three hours. Thank you for that calculation. I was about asking you. Now, consider working hours, work days, plus weekends. How many days in total do you think it would take? You know, considering it's seventy-five hours of work to create this report, would you see, would you still say three days? So, if the report started to be prepared on Monday, and it would take seventy-five hours of work, how many working hours do you have in a week to even start? Then tell me how many days would you need to cover seventy-five hours of work? Then who can tell me? Who can tell me that? You work Monday to Friday, right? Now, if you need 75 hours to get this done, how many days would that 75 hours spread across? So on the top of my head, it's around you know five days. Who, who agrees with me? Who, who who wants to help me? If you have um, say for example, you work eight hours per day, work eight hours per day. Um, okay, somebody says nine days. Yeah, if you work eight hours per day. You know, just do the do the math, do the calculation. Forty hours in a week, okay, and that's just about half the number of exactly half the number of um um hours you need, total hours you need to do this, okay. So that will be the first week gone, okay. So you need another um three days at least in the following week, two to three days. So you are looking at seven days of work, about seven days of work and that slows down reporting slows down decision making at the top level of the organization all right so the ceos the coos are unable to look into these reports because it's not even available in the first place the five hours has to go down before all this um you know happens and that was not the only problem okay as if this alone 75 hours is not enough as a problem okay there are also discrepancies at the end of the day. So because of the hassle, okay, because of the hassle of, you know, um, consolidating the data from, consolidating the data from the different formats, from PDF, from Excel, from Word, from, you know, Google Drive, to combine them in a single file before analysis can take place. Some errors would have occurred, you know, given the fact that these things are coming from different um, file formats. So there is there are discrepancies in the data. So the analysis is really not so accurate. Okay. So I stepped in as the financial analyst in that particular organization, and I, I made them understand that I know how to solve this problem. Okay, I know how to solve this problem. And what did I use to solve the problem? Very simple. Okay, very simple. What did I use to solve the problem? This is, you know, the problem uh, that I, I just finished explaining all of this, okay, in my previous slide. So different, uh, I mean, there were discrepancies, you know, you can't even talk about real-time analysis. It was time-consuming and difficult to make decisions. Okay, so when I stepped in to solve the problem, what did I use? I used these three three things. I use Google Forms. I use Google Sheets, as well as 
Microsoft Power BI, and I was able to solve the problem. And I'll show you the report I built. I'll tell you a bit about how I built it. Show you, um, you know, a snippet of you know how to how to you know work with this diverse um data source and data analysis platforms. Okay, and after doing this, the report was fully automated, fully automated. So it means that if I built this solution and they could use it over the course of um over the course of the year. They used it over the course of the entire year without having to build another report from scratch. Okay. So and it was a fully packed, fully automated report, you know, that even had some level of security applied to it, you know, so that people in certain location would not be able to see data from other locations apart from you know the top guys within the organization that needed access to the entire information. So a fully fledged um you know um, um automated report. And what was the final what was the final what was the final um result? Okay before I go before I go on to show you what it looks like. Okay remember I said we had five different um we had five different locations, right? Um, let's hope I'm able to remember. We had London, we had Liverpool, we had Edinburgh, we had um, what was the other one? Um, somebody help me. Okay, Manchester. Yeah, Manchester. Okay, and then we had um, Birmingham. So, right. So, rather than them sending me an email. Rather than them sending me an email, okay, I from here from this location, I send them a Google form link, okay. I send them a Google form link. So rather than them sending this to me, I send them a Google form link, okay. I send them a Google form link, okay. So um, let's call this. Let's just allow me to grab my razor. All right. So what I did was to ask them to fill in a Google form. Okay. They filled in a Google form. Now, the first problem this Google form is it takes away all those different file formats. No more PDFs, no more, no more inconsistency in terms of the data that I'm able to collect, right? That's the first problem this solves. Then from the form, from this form, because I created it and I have access, I'm able to, sorry about my drawing, guys. Sorry about my drawing. Um, I'm a very good artist, by the way. Okay, so uh, I know you may be laughing at me now that Mohammed cannot draw. <laughs> Don't try me, okay? So I'm a fantastic artist. So, um, yeah, just bear with me, right? So Google Form, okay, from Google Form, I'm able to extract this inform the information that they've entered from all the various locations to Google Sheets. Now, from Google Sheets, I'm now able to connect Power BI. I'm able to connect Power BI. I'm able to connect Power BI okay to google sheets and this is what does the magic for me okay this is what does the magic for me my power bi does the magic i'm able to automate the entire process end to end in such a way that in fact it it requires no human intervention intervention to see the latest report okay how cool is this guys how cool is this? How cool is this? Before I show you, I'll show you the report that I created. I'll show you the report I created that compared um, budgets versus actual, you know, I'll show you the report. Yeah. Okay, fantastic, great. Okay, great. Um, okay, Gospel is asking about a practical class. So this is one of the projects you get to build with us. Okay, you get to build this with us. Okay, I'll talk more about that, but 
Um, I'll show you the, the reports that I was that I was able to build. All right. So you see you see how it looks like. Okay. So let me show you the reports that I was able to build. The end product. Okay. And then I'll walk you through on how I was able to, you know, um, create Google, Google, the Google form and how I was able to extract the 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 sheets. Okay. And you see how that you know plays out. Okay. Give me one second. All right. So now. Okay, fantastic. Now I want you to take a look at you know what I have here. I want you to take a look at what I have here. Um, okay, I'll just close that. All right. So I want you to take a look at what I have here. Okay. Now, guys, can you see my screen? Can we all see my screen? Can we see my screen? Here? Can you see my screen? So this is what I built in Power BI, Microsoft Power BI, fantastic. Now you can see I had the total budget, I had the total actual, and I also had the difference between the budget and the actual. You can see what the budget is saying about 1.7 million, okay? And the actual amount spent was around 2.3 million. And that is overspending, okay? And you can see that reflecting in the variance, okay? You can see that reflecting in the variance. And you can see some more analysis, okay? So if you look here, you can see the um, breakdown of, um, you know, the budget compared to compared to um, actual money spent across the month from January this year down to today, which is April, okay? Down to today, which is April, okay? You can also see this chart that compares in terms of percentage across the different departments you have you know, um, within the organization on comparing the amounts they spent um, to what they budgeted. So budget is in black, while the actual is in green, as you can see. Then you can also see this table breaking down, you know, the different locations, all right, to, uh, and showing us what's the um, difference between the budget and the actual money spent was, okay? And you can see, guys, can you see the culprits? Can you, can we, if I ask you, who are the culprits for this variance here in terms of the location? What would be your answer? What would be your answer? If I say, who are the culprits? What would be your answer? I'll still show you the engine behind this, how I came up with this and all that. So just hang in there. Okay. But for now, I want you to point at, okay, someone says Liverpool. I want you to look at it very well. Okay, look at the actual budget and look at the, uh, so let's turn off our video so that we don't distract the class. All right, so now, oh yes, exactly. You can see Birmingham and London. Okay, so they are the highest contributors to the total variance. So all of us, you have um, compared to them, uh, you know, just, um, a bit negligible, especially from Liverpool. Okay, so um, they contribute more to this variance. Okay, so all except Edinburgh, exactly fantastic um, analysis. And you can see the variance also, the trend of variance from January this year down to um, today, which is April. Okay, down to today, which is April, you can see the variance. All right, so. Um, this was the report I came up with. You can see also, you know, a map showing the location itself. So if I click on Birmingham, for example, you know, it filters, um, it filters the other visuals to show me information about Birmingham. You can see how that filters. Okay, you can see it filters. All right, if I click on Edinburgh, it shows me, and you can see the uh, the trend also. Okay, so you can see the trend. You can see the analysis. Um, you can see the sales. You can see for sales in Birmingham, in um, Edinburgh. Can you see that, guys? Can you see what happened when we compare the budget versus actual in the sales department for Edinburgh? Can you see that? 
Okay, can you see that? So this is where we would have been able to save more money um, if sales performed like um, the same marketing. Okay, you can see the budget. This was what they budgeted, and this was what they spent versus C sales. They budgeted, you know, very small, and they spent very, um, very large compared to what they budgeted. Guys, can we see that? Can we see that? Okay, so I'll click on Liverpool. I'll click on Liverpool now, and you can see Liverpool. You know, that's where the marketing team is. All right, and you can see the breakdown, okay, and so on and so forth. We go to London, you can see the map goes to London, Manchester, the map would go to uh, Manchester. You can see the trend um, across the months. So they need these reports, okay, they need these reports, all right, in a way that we can easily share with every single person. So, what was the first thing I did? I set up a Google. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, let me show you what that looks like. Okay, and I'll still share the form with you. So I, how many of us are familiar with Google? Okay, you filled a Google form before. You filled a Google form. Um, in fact, if you're on this call, you should have filled a Google form. Okay, we, we're literally collecting uh, our attendance via Google form. So, okay, okay, Chairman, I see your hand. So you filled a Google form for. Um, so, you can use Google Form. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be. You know, um, Google. You could use Microsoft Form. You know, and you know so many other platforms. Okay, so I created this Google Form it's called Budget versus Actual, and I'll still share it with you guys. You would fill it out, and then you see how the information you guys put in reflect on that dashboard I showed you. It's going to reflect on that dashboard that I showed you. Okay, so. This particular, um, you know, this particular form, you know, it asks for some information, okay? So let me show you how you're going to feel it when I share it with you, okay? And how you see the, um, you know, results at the end of the day. Now, it says choose a department. So depending on the department I'm in, okay? Let's take, for example, an IT. So I'll pick IT or let me pick finance. Okay, let me pick finance, where money is, all right? So I'm picking where money is, last finance. So um, the date of submission, I can just simply select today's date. You can select any date, all right? So I'll just select today's date, all right? Um, budget category. So what specific area was budget for? So I'll just select uh, training and development, okay? Training and development, all right? Um, so then we have budget amount. So let's assume the budget amount was um, for Let's say, let's say twenty one thousand, okay, twenty one thousand. I'll just type twenty one thousand, and the amount spent was let's assume I spent fifteen thousand. So I'll type fifteen thousand, okay. I'll scroll down, and finally, that it's asking for my location. All right, so I'll just pick at random. I'll pick Edinburgh for example, and click on submit. I'll click on submit, and that submit my response and feel free to submit you know as many responses as possible okay so but let me show you how you know the response view okay let me show you the response view okay let me show you the response view so i'll go to responses so we've had you know some other people fill it in um prior so i'll go to um view in sheets view in sheets okay so um this is the Google Sheets um, view. And this is how um, I'm able to extract. You can see the information I just filled. Can you see the timestamp um, 2043? You know, you can see my time here. Okay, 2043, that's my time currently. Finance department, um, this was the date of submission I selected. This was the um, budget category. You can, you remember my budget amount and my amount spent and my location. So I'm going to send you the link to the form now in the chat, and I want you to fill it. And you see how it, the, your responses directly come into this Google Sheet. And then I'll show you how I connected this Google Sheet to my Power BI. 
okay, how I connected Power BI rather to this Google Sheet to build that report. And then from there, we'll then go into um, how we share on Power BI service, how you can um, implement your security. Yeah, does Google Form and Google Sheet work together? Absolutely. If you look at, if you create a form, okay, if you create a form, um, you would have, you'll be able to see the responses. And when you click on responses, okay, you see view in sheets, view in sheets. So when you click on view in sheets, it opens a Google sheet format of all your responses. Okay. And that way you can share that with people. So I'm just going to keep it here. All right. And um, I would share the, the, allow me to share the form with you. So I'll share the form with you. So fill it, um, fill it, fill the form, and then we'll go to Power BI and do something amazing. So that's the link to the form. So click on it and fill it out. And I want you guys to look at my screen as people submit their responses. You see new responses um, falling out. So let me color this particular line so we can keep track. Yeah. So. That was the last line, the one I filled. So I want you to fill the form, fill the form, click on submit, and let's have your responses. Fill the form. Okay, so I've put the link in the chat, everyone. So go ahead, you know, select. Um, yeah, you can see somebody just filled um, training development, Manchester. So let's keep our responses coming in. Okay, another person from London. Okay, HR. Okay, Liverpool. All right, IT, training, training development. Okay, great. Finance. Okay, person from finance has, uh, you know, has a very big budget from London. Okay, marketing, Liverpool. And you can see how it's directly coming into the how is directly coming into the, um, you know, the reports. Yeah, you can see people putting in, you know, quite a huge amount, um, in there also. Okay, um, fifty. This is fifty million. Okay, so these amounts are really going to, you know, show. Can you please resend the link? So I just resend it now. That's the link, the response. So you can see how many people have filled after I filled, right? So when you and this is how you know. You ensure that um, you control what kind of, you know, you control what kind of data you get from um, each of this, um, each of the branches. So I would allow people feel. So let's fill it up. All right. Let's fill it up. So we have quite some huge numbers. All right. Fantastic. So you are going to see the effects. You see the effects on the chart once I refresh, okay? Somebody put 80 million, right? All right, fantastic. Okay, so um, I think some people will, will still be feeling, okay? Um, responses are still coming in. Okay, so let's hold on. Let's hold on, okay? Let's hold on and let me show you how to refresh okay let me now show you how to refresh so let's hold on i'll still give you the opportunity to fill in the form and you can also see um my colleague in the chat has posted the form to fill the attendance okay so you want to fill that in fill in the attendance form also so that you can gain um access to all the materials we, we use for today's session okay so you can be happy so um yeah so i want us to just put a hold on cleaning the form now and let me take us to power bi so i've connected power bi to that particular form this report is connected to that google sheet okay would the recording be sent to us absolutely all right absolutely to be sent across alongside um the slides as well okay so we can all see that we 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 you can see the figures right now. Okay, you can see the figures right now. So I'm going to go ahead and um I'll go ahead and 
Fantastic. So I'll go ahead and hit refresh. Can we see refresh here? You can see refresh. That's the button for you to refresh. I'm just doing this manually just to show you know how it works. So I'll click on refresh. Okay. I'll click on refresh and you can see it's refreshing. All right. From responses, calculations. So I created some calculations. All right. See 79 rules loaded. So I'll wait for it. And you see the all the values will now update to show me the new set of um you know the new analysis. So it's loading, it's loading. Okay. Fantastic. So now, guys, can you see what happened? Can you see what happened? All right. So now, can you see what happened to the chart, guys? Can we all see what happened to the chart? Can we all see what has happened to the chart? Fantastic. So um, most people filled in April. Okay. Most of us have now filled in April. Um, and you can see the bar for April, you know, compared to the other charts. Um, so everybody filled in April, and you can now see that um, it has also reflected in the variance, okay? It has reflected in the variance and the total amount as well. So the values are now huge, are now very large, and, you know, cannot, um, they cannot, you know, be, they, you cannot see all of the numbers. So I'll just quickly turn this to um, units. So I'll turn that to units. Okay, I'll just do that quickly so that we can see that. Okay, units, um, let me see millions. Okay, that's millions. Um, I'll click on this also. Um, let's turn this to millions as well for total actual. So display units, millions. All right, 192 and variance also. I'll select variance in the series and then change it to millions here so I can see it in millions. Yes, you can see that in um, millions now. So how was the Power BI connected to the division responses? That is exactly what I'll show you right now. If you are wondering how I did that, okay? Well, you can see that all your responses have now been recorded, okay? They've been recorded now here. So in order to... You know, let's take a look at how you know I was able to create the how I was able to create the um uh, how, how I was able to create the connections. Okay, now if you look at Power BI, you see, can you see what I have here? Can you see get data? Can we all see that? Get data. Can we see get data? Get, get data. Get data. Can we all see that? Get data. So beside get data, you have a drop down. If you click on the drop down, if you click on the drop down, you see a bunch of different data sources that you can connect Power BI to. Excel workbook. You can connect to a semantic model, a data flows, data vast, you know, and a bunch of them. But Google Sheets is not here. Google Sheets is not here. So I'll click on. I can't see get data. Somebody saying I can't see get data. Okay, if you look at where my mouse is, if you can see my screen and you look at where my mouse is currently, can you see where my mouse is? On the top left corner of my screen. If you can see where my mouse is, all right, you'll see get data. Fantastic. So that is get data. Now, if you click on the drop down, it shows you, you know, some very common data sources that you can connect Power BI to. But what we intend to connect to is a Google Sheets. Google Sheets. So I'll click on more. I'll click on more. So that gives me um, access to even more data um, sources. Okay, you can see um, this is all, all your all the possible data sources that you know you can connect um, Power BI to. You can see them, you scroll down quite a bunch of them. All right. So and on the left hand side here, you know, you can see them also. You can see some um, different categories of data sources. All right, you can connect to a folder, you can connect to a PDF. Can connect to a parquet, all right. You can connect to a SharePoint folder if your organization works with, um, you know, Microsoft Suite. You can, you know, and you have a SharePoint list, you can actually connect to that as well, you know. But what we are looking for is Google Sheets. So in this bar, in this box here, I'll just type Google 
Sheets. Okay? Google Sheets. Type in Google Sheets. And once you type in Google Sheets, you see a suggestion, import data from Google Sheets. This would help you import data from Google Sheets. Can we all see these guys? Can we all see this, guys? Can we see this? This will help you import data from Google Sheets. Exactly. So, fantastic. You type in Google Sheets, it allows you to import data from Google Sheets. Click on Google Sheets. Click on Google Sheets here from the suggestion. Okay, click on Google Sheets here from suggestion and then click on Connect. Then you click on Connect. Click on Connect. Now, once you click on Connect, okay, can you see this box, this dialog box here? That says Google Sheets, Google Sheets URL. It's asking me for the link to the Google Sheets. It's asking me for the link to the Google Sheets. It's asking me for the link to the Google Sheets. So I'll just pull the Google Sheets out now from, the, from my second screen, okay? Put it here. Now, this is the Google Sheets, okay? The one I was presenting, all right? The one I was presenting a couple of months ago. So I think, you know, some people um, have filled even more, okay? So now, if you look at this Google Sheets, yeah? This up here, this is the URL. This is the link to the Google Sheets. This is the link to the Google Sheets. And all I need to do is to copy the link. Control C for copy. Copy the link. Or I just right click on that and click on copy. Copy. Okay. So once I click on copy, I can then move this. Okay. All right. And I come back here. All right. Come back here and paste the link. I paste the link to that Google Sheets. All right, paste the link. That's easy as that. Paste the link and click on OK. Now, once you click on OK, okay, all right, it says you aren't signed in. You aren't signed in and gives you a box for sign. In. So it just needs you to sign in um, your, your, your Google account. So just simply click on sign in. Once you click on sign in, it will pop up this page for you. To pop up this page for you in your browser. And it says sign in to your Google account. Okay. And you know, I can simply, you know, sign in to um, any of them. So just sign in. So I'll click on sign in. So once I click on that um, account, one of my emails, you can see my name here and my, my picture right there. It says Power BI Desktop already has some access, okay? And then, um, yeah, you can read through all of these. You may be sharing sensitive, you know, just for data privacy policies and all that. You will just click on continue. Click on continue at this point. Once you click on continue, it will bring a pop-up saying sign in complete. You can return to the application. Feel free to close this browser tab. I'll just minimize that. And when I come back here now, okay, you can now see you are currently signed in. You are currently signed in and I click on connect. I click on connect. Click on connect. Now, once you click on connect, Power BI does its, its, its trick. If you've ever connected Power BI to an Excel file before, okay, you'll be familiar with this, nav this navigator page. So it brings up this page where, you know, and if you're not familiar with it, you know, this is how this is how to connect Power BI to your Google Sheets. I'll just simply check the box for this form response one. You can see it says form response is one, okay? And that is um, the Google sheet I generated from my Google form, right? I click check, I check the box. And guys, does this look familiar? Does this look familiar? Doesn't this look familiar? Or which question? You can answer, you can answer any one of the two questions I asked. I asked, does this look familiar? Or doesn't this look familiar? Fantastic. You can see that um, this is the data directly from my Google form. Okay. Somebody says not at all. All right. So if you look at the content here, you see that it's the content of my my Google Sheets. Okay. You can see the you can see. Let me look for the timestamp. I think I filled um 2043, you can see I filled in this, okay? You can see the timestamp. Remember I chose, I think, training development to 1K and all that, all right? So I can 
see all the other responses that came that came after mine. All right. So now, once um I have this preview, all I need to do is to click on transform data. Okay. How did you get the navigator? Once you put in once we put in the you put in the link. And you know, we sign in as I showed earlier. Um, you just click on connect. Like I said, the session is recorded on Demola. You get all of this, and um, you just need to follow the steps and that. So you create your own, you know, have people feel it, connect and um, generate a sheet, connect Power BI to that sheet by following these steps, and you will be absolutely fine. All right. So I'll click on transform data. Okay, click on transform data and once you click on transform data, that takes you to an aspect of a very interesting aspect of Power BI called Power Query Editor. Power Query Editor. So I would already imported, um, you know, the, the one the one I used to create the, the the report initially. That's it. So the one we just um, imported again because I'm importing it again. You can see it's automatically renamed it and put a two beside it here so that it differentiates it from the first one. So if you look at it now, guys, if you look at it, you have the column headers, right? You have the column headers here, but we actually want the column headers to be here, which says column one, column two, column three, all right? So we want this first row to be here, okay? We want this first row to be here. And all we need to do, guys, all we need to do, or all you need to do is, you see this table icon on the top left corner of the table itself, this table icon right here where my mouse is. Okay, this table icon where my mouse is, I'll click on it, click on it, and select use first row as headers. Use first row as headers. I'll click on that, use first row as headers. And once I do that, you now have timestamp, choose from choose a department, date of this, so um, date, date of submission, you know, and all that. You have all of that, um, all of the uh, columns in, the um in the day in you know as the and uh, you have all of the column headers appropriately um aligned now one other thing you notice that power bi does for you if you look to the left hand side of each column header to the left corner of each each column header you see the data types for timestamp you see you know this is a time um a date time date uh, a date time format so power bi will look at the content of your columns and assign the appropriate data type based on the first few, um, the first few rows in your in that column. You can see ABC, which stands for text. You can see dates. The calendar icon stands for dates. ABC stands for text. Here you have one, two, three, meaning you have whole numbers. One, two, three. You also have whole numbers here, and then you have um, ABC for location. ABC for location all right and all you need to do from this point you know it's pretty much familiar especially if you've used power bi before but if you've not used power bi before how to do this from scratch okay these are some of the this is just a snippet of what you get to learn you know when you get into the uh, program all right so you click on close and apply click on close and apply and you know that loads the data for you i'll just uh you just, we'll just wait a while you see it's loading form response one bracket two, which is the second version, right? That I am loading in here now. Okay, I'm loading that in here now. Let's give it a moment to load. Now, once it finishes loading, you'd see something like form. You can see form response one here now, correct? In my data pane, you'd see something like form response one bracket two also now added here, which means I can now pick the, my data fields from there to build my report. You can see it says working on it, working on it. It's working on it. So let's see what we have. Fantastic. Can we all see, let me collapse all of these so that we can see that. Can you see now you have form response one bracket two. Can we see that? And you can see the date, um, the, the date attached to it, the date refreshed. Okay, you can see that. Can you see that from response one to? So once you have it here, you can then leverage, you know, the column, the fields 
to build um, this report that we have here. Okay, to build this report that we have right here. All right. So um, after all of this is done, okay, after all of this is done, then the bone of contention is sharing. How do you then share it? Um, we had the report. We could, you know, they they were spending seventy five hours a week to build something similar. All right, back in the days. Okay, but how do we then share all of this? All right. Now, when you get to work in an organization, right? When you get to work in an organization that um has license to um you know Power BI service, and to even do all of this, you you really don't need a license to be a demo. You you personally don't need a license. But when you get to work with organizations, so organizations already leverage Power BI service. Okay, and um, all you need to do is once you've created this, once you've created this, all right, you then go to can we all see my where my mouse is? Publish. Can we see publish? Can we see where my mouse is? Just confirm you can see where my mouse correctly is. You see, it says publish, all right, publish. And it says publish this report online in the Power BI service. Can we all see that? Publish this report online in the Power BI service. Can we see that? Can we see this? Let me see your responses in the chat. Can you see publish right here? Okay, thank you very much for your responses. Okay, thank you, fantastic, great. So before I click on publish, I'm not, I've not clicked on publish yet, okay? So before I click on publish, all right? Allow me to show you. Allow me to show you. Um, you know what Power BI service looks like. So I'll just say Power BI sign in. I'll just search for Power BI sign in. This is my browser, mind you. This is my web browser, Google Chrome. So I just came here, type Power BI sign in, all right, and I'll click on Power BI sign in. Now, once I click on Power BI sign in. That signs me into my Power BI service. Okay. <clears throat> it signs me into my Power BI service. All right. So if you're signing in for the first time, it would um, you know, ask you for your password and all that. Okay. So I have my accounts and you can gain access to these, um, you know, especially when you start working as an um as a financial analyst. But to practice, okay, you really don't need to subscribe for Power BI license um there are ways you can get access to all of these all right now but when you come to power bi service okay you can you, if you look here you see the power bi logo all right and one thing you want to do is you you need to note that when you want to publish when you want to publish your report online you need to have created what we call um a workspace okay create a workspace all right so i can create a workspace by simply clicking on workspaces on the left-hand side here. I'll click on workspaces. You can see a bunch of other workspaces that I've worked with. Okay, but to create a new one, I would click on new workspace at the bottom here. New workspace, new workspace. My workspace allows me to, it's like me creating a location where I want to upload the Power BI reports into. So I'm creating a location where, location online, where I would publish the Power BI report into. So it's asking me to give my workspace name. Let me give it FA Masterclass. FA Masterclass, okay? FA Masterclass. And it said this name is available. And all I need to do is to click on Apply at the bottom here. I'll simply click on Apply. Now, once I click on Apply, a brand new shiny workspace is created for me. Brand new workspace is created for me, and it is called FA Master Class. Now you can see there is nothing here yet. Okay, add something new or upload something to see them here. Now, now that I've created this, you can see this FA Master Class. Can we all see this? FA Master Class. We created the workspace in Power BI service, and this is in my browser online. Okay, guys, are we following? Are we following? Are you are we following? Are we following? You're getting the idea. I'm just showing you the workings that, that went on that on how to create. It's a fully fledged project, all right. Which is why 
you can't you cannot really crush it up to three hours, but you can do it, you know, as a pro, you can do it within, you know, within within a day. You can do all of this. All right. You can do this within a day. So there is nothing here currently now. This is my web browser. So I'll go back to my Power BI. So let me go back to my Power BI. Now this is Power BI. Okay, this is Power BI. Now all I need to do is to click on publish now. I'll click on publish. I'll click on publish. Now once I click on publish, it tells me, oh, you've made some changes. Do you want to save the changes? Yes, I'll just click on save. I'll click on save, all right? Click on save. And once you click on save, Power BI then um, pops up, you know, okay? So I'll go ahead and click on publish now again after saving, all right? So after clicking on publish, Power BI will pop up, you know, a list of my workspaces for me. All right, let's hang on. All right, can we see this dialog box here now? Can we see this dialog box here? Say publish to Power BI. Publish to Power BI. Select a destination. Remember I said that the workspace we created serves as a destination, you know, where we would publish our Power BI. So it's asking me, what, where do I want to? So I have a bunch of them here, and that's simply because I've been able to create so many workspaces for different purposes. All right, but if you look closely here, guys, does this look familiar? What we just created, FA Masterclass. Can we see that? We created it just now. Okay, can we see FA Masterclass? Exactly. FA Masterclass. Okay, FA Masterclass. So I'll click on FA Masterclass. Click on FA Masterclass. Okay, once you click on it, the select button, button turns green, meaning Okay, yeah, you selected something. Is that what you want to actually select? I'll click on select. I'll click on select. And all I need to do at this point is to sit back. Allow Power BI do its job. Okay, so it goes through the back end and publishes the report to my Power BI service. Okay, so if I go back, you can see now it says success. Publish it to Power BI, success. Okay, and it gives you some, you know, a bit of quick insights. If you want to read through that, you know, um, feel free to explore, okay? But it says success, meaning this has successfully been published into my FA Masterclass workspace in Power BI service. And all I need to do is to click on, got it. Click on, got it. Now, I go to my browser, the same browser, okay? The same browser, this is FA Masterclass. You can still see it's still empty. Let's give it a minute. Without clicking on anything, I didn't click anything. I just came here and it's, automatically refreshed, okay? And you can now see budget versus actual. That was the title of my, um, that was the title, that was the title of my Power BI report here. Yeah, this is Power BI. Can you see budget versus actual? So let me minimize this. Okay, so this is my browser now. Can we all see this now, guys? This is my browser, okay? But you notice you have two copies, okay? That's what you, that's what you see it as, especially if you are just starting out. You, you'd say, oh, these are two copies. But if you look closely, one is the report, one is the report, and one is the semantic model. You would say, oh, what is semantic model? Simply look at this as the data set behind the report. So this is the report, and this is the data set. This is the report, and this is the data set. This is the report, and this is the data set. Are we together, guys? This is the report and this is the data set. So if I click on this now, okay, if I click on this, I should be able to see the, the same report that I published. Are we ready to see that? Are we ready to see that? I'm not, I've, I'm here to click on the reports now, but I'm about to, but I want you to be ready. Confirm you are ready. So I can then go ahead and click on it. Oh, whatever is ready. Elliot is ready. Fantastic. Okay, let me see those who are ready. Okay, great. So I'll go ahead. Okay, let's keep our responses coming in. I'll go ahead and click on ready here. I'll, I mean, <laughs> I said I'll click on ready. I beg your pardon. I'll click on budget versus actual, okay? Budget versus actual, the first one that says reports. 
I'll click on that. And you can see it says loading your report, loading your report. And boom, the same report we built, the Power BI. You can now see it here. That same report, you can now see it here. Then you ask, oh, what's the point? Or oh, would you say Microsoft Fabric? Fantastic. Okay, so what's the point of publishing? Okay, can't we, since we saved the Power BI on our desktop, couldn't we have just emailed the report to whomever we wanted to email it to? Yes, you could have done that, but that's not the point. Okay, the point here is that you are publishing it so that you can be able to effect what we call um, security. So Power BI service allows you to, you know, implement what we call some level of security, okay? And that allows you to, you know, assign that to um, some specific individuals. So, but let, let's say you want to um, you want to share this now, okay? You see share here, you see share here, okay? When you click on share now, all right? When you click on share, okay? Now you you see what this says: send link budget versus actual people in your organization with the link can view and share, okay? So you can copy the link, okay? You can copy the link and put it on your um. On in the you know the senior executives they have their groups all of them have their communication uh, um their communication boxes and you can put it in there for them you know and they always know where to go to get access to this particular report okay they always know where to get access to a particular report so depending on your organization on your organization all right um so when you're working in an organization you can also enter the person's email here. Okay, let's say I have somebody bearing Ola just from the top of my head. Let's assume I have somebody bearing Ola. I can type Ola and it says, okay, um, enter a valid email. So let me try um, Adeza, for example. Okay, you can see Adeza Suleiman. Adeza Suleiman, all right, founder of Analytics. So I can share this report with Adeza Suleiman, all right? And you can add more people, okay? the CEO, the COOs, and they will have a copy of this. So they can simply click on the link and see the report. That's not all, okay? That's not all. So this is just to, you can click on send and, you know, the email is sent, okay? But that's not all. There, there are other things that you can do, okay? There are other things that you can do. And part of it is, you're going to be sharing this report now to various locations, London, Birmingham, um, what were the other ones? Liverpool mentioned them, um, Edinburgh and Manchester. All right. So I don't know why I'm calling Manchester last. Okay, but um, yeah, I don't know why, but there, there is not it's not in any particular order. Okay. So now, but you want to you get the point, you get the gist. You want to share this report across various different locations. All right, so we want to share this report across several locations, okay? So you need to put a level of security so that the guys in Liverpool, when you share the same link, this same link that I shared with Adesa just now, the same link I shared with Adesa, I can share that same link with people in Liverpool, but they will only be able to see information for Liverpool. The people in um, Birmingham will only be able to see information in, for Birmingham. For example, you may have an operations lead in Birmingham, for example. You share the link with them, the same link, the same link, all right? But they are only able to see the data filter down to Birmingham alone. Do you want to see how to do that? Do you want me to show you how to do that? Should I show you how to do that? I'll show you how to do that, okay? Let me show you how to do that, all right? Let me show you how to do that, but I'm sure you want to see it. That's it. Now, to do that, you go back to your kitchen. Your kitchen is your Power BI um, desktop, okay? So this is, I'm back in Power BI desktop. This is no longer the browser now, okay? That was the browser, um, which was Power BI service. Now this is, I'm back in Power BI desktop. Remember, I clicked on publish here to publish Power BI service. Okay, so this is Power BI Desktop. Uh, Power BI Service was the one 
on the web page. Now, let's assume, and I want to create, um, you know, what we call, I want to create, uh, you know, what we call um, um, row level security, it's called security, okay? We go to two, we go to security. Okay, I can see some experienced Power BI users, okay? But I'm sure you would have gained one or two insights into, you know, how to automate processes. Now, we are not even done yet, so hang on, okay? Now, how do you do that? You come to Power BI Desktop and click on Modeling. You click on Modeling, okay? Click on Modeling, all right? Once you click on Modeling, you see Manage Rules. Manage Rules. Manage Rules. Now, you can see me just hovering my mouse on it. And for, for, for people who are just starting out, I tell them, Whatever you are asked to click on something, don't just click on it. Put your mouse on it, hover your mouse on it, all right? And see if it pops up something. And that will tell you a bit more, more about what that thing does. Okay, create, change, or delete security rules, all right? Security rules, and that's what we want to do. We actually want to create. So I'll click on manage rules. I'll click on manage rules, and this dialog box pops up. Okay, create new security rules and use filters to define low level data restrictions. That's exactly what we want to do. So we want to restrict the data so in such a way that once we share that same link, not a different link, not a different report, the same exact report, share that same report with people in different locations, but because they are in that specific location, they are, uh, and they are within our organization, of course. So they will, they will see the data filtered down to their location. So I'll click on new and it says untitled. Of course, it has to be untitled. So um, I'll double click on untitled. Just give me one second. Double click on the on untitled and I can say um, head of, I can say head of Liverpool operations. Head of Liverpool operation. I'll just say ops. Head of Liverpool ops. Head of Liverpool Ops, okay? Head of Liverpool Ops. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. So that is that, okay? You rename it, hit enter to register it. And then I'll click on um, the first table, which is form response one. You see, you're, you're confused if it's form response one, you know, which one of the two. So just hover your mouse on it and you see a pop-up. It says form response one. That's the one we need. So I'll click on it. After clicking on it, you see new under filter data. You see new, okay. You see new, okay. You see new. I'll click on new, click on new, all right. Click on new, and by default, it selects the first column, the column with the you know, depending on the letter of the alphabet, select the first column for me by default. But I want to filter by location, I want to filter by location, guys. Are we together? I want to filter by location. So I'll click on the drop down and select location so that I can now say that, oh, when well, location is Liverpool, this, this is our, the condition is equals. So I'll leave it as equals. You have several other conditions. Okay. You can explore when you're, when you're trying your hands on your own, you know, to, you know, um, create something from your own deletions. Okay. Now, I'll leave it at equals because I want to say when location equals Liverpool. So I'll type Liverpool. When location equals Liverpool, okay? Um, show the head of Liverpool ops only data around Liverpool. That's what I'm simply saying. Once the head of Liverpool, Liverpool ops gets the link to this data set, all right? I want them to see only information pertaining to Liverpool. And I'll hit save. Click on save. Once I click on save, all right, you see successfully applied rule change. All right, successfully applied rule changes. And all I need to do is to close this up. I close that dialog box up. Now, after doing so, after doing so, all I need to do, all right, is still on modeling, still on modeling. So let's see, let's have a snippet of what the head of Liverpool will see, okay? Still on modeling, still on modeling here. Can you see where my mouse is? Remember I clicked on modeling before I clicked on manage rules, okay? 
still on modeling, right? Click on modeling, still on modeling. You see just beside manage rules, beside manage rules, you have a small icon, okay? Um, you have a small icon that says, if I hold my mouse on it, you see what it says. It says, see what's visible to people with different security rules and permissions. So we have created a rule for head of Uber. Let us test it and see how it will look like when they get it. So I'll click on this icon, okay? Click on this icon and you see head of Liverpool Ops, okay? You can see users, okay? Head of Liverpool Ops, okay? View as rule. So let's view as head of Liverpool Ops. So we want to impersonate the head of Liverpool now. So I'll check the box for head of Liverpool Ops. Click on OK. Now, once I click on OK, guys, do you notice what happened? Can we see what happened? Can we see what happened to the, to the report? When I click on OK, do you see what happens? What you can see on my screen is what the head of Liverpool ops would see when you share this report with them. Okay? That is what they will, this is exactly what they will see. All right? So these are the departments in the in Liverpool ops. They have the finance, HR, IT, and marketing, the Liverpool ops. This is what they will see. You can see it only shows information for Liverpool now. All right? So this is what you would see, all right, in um, Liverpool. The head of um, this is what the head of Liverpool Ops would see. So, and you know, it works since you know, tested it, it works. All I need to do is to click on stop viewing. I'll click on stop viewing, and that takes me back to the original report. Okay, it takes me back to the original report. Okay, but that's not all. That's not all. You can see I'm saying, like, as if I have you know, so many things up my sleeve today for you guys. We'll do one more thing. We'll do one more thing, okay? Let's go back to Power BI service. That's my browser, okay? Go back to Power BI service. So this is my browser. You can see my browsing page. I can create a new tab, you know, and browse. If I want to go to YouTube, this is it. So I, but I don't want to go to YouTube now. Let's leave YouTube for later, all right? So this particular um, um report now, okay? I want it in such a way that, you know, we are going to be having monthly data set. So at the end of April, you know, they continue to fill in this and, you know, we get our reports updated, right? At the end of March, I mean, at the end of May, same thing. So you don't want to have to repeat this entire process all over again. So we need to schedule refresh. We need to do what? Schedule refresh. Some, some people call it schedule, right? So whatever one you want to call it. We need to do what? I'll type it in the chat. Schedule refresh. That's the last thing we'll do. You know, before I show you some of the other things we have in store for you guys. Okay, we need to put schedule refresh start every single morning. We can schedule the refresh so to be that every single morning before work starts, the data automatically refreshes by itself. The report refreshes by itself so that once you know your CEO resumes work or your CEO resumes work and they want to have a look at what the data says, okay, they, are, they can be rest assured that. They are seeing the latest information. How cool is that? How cool is that? Okay. And before the end of work, also, you can still share, you can schedule this in such a way that before the end of work, it goes through another cycle of refresh. Okay. So every single time, every single time, okay, you have the latest data, the date, latest reports, um, you know, on, on show. Are we together? So let me show you how to do that. So in order to do that, all right, in order to do that, okay, in order to do that, all right, um, I'll go to, this is, you can see on the left-hand side here, because this report, I put it under my FA Masterclass, under my FA Masterclass workspace, which was the destination for the report. You remember, we created that together. Okay, because it's there, I'll click on it. I'll click on FA Masterclass right here. FA Masterclass, right here. Click on that, and that takes me back to, um, you know, when you know when we first when we first published. This was all we saw. Okay, now how do we refresh? How do we schedule refresh? You can see here. If you look here now, you see, um, type owner, um, you can see uh refreshed. Okay, next refresh, unavailable. Right, next refresh is not stated. 
Okay, so next refresh is not stated. Now we want it, we want you know to input something here so that, um, that can allow us you know refresh. Now to schedule refresh, you see this tiny icon for the semantic model, which is the data set. Like I said, think of the semantic model as the data set behind this report. Okay, so can we see this icon here? This icon, can you see what it says? I hope it's not too tiny on my screen. This icon here, hopefully my mouse on it, can you see what it says? It says schedule refresh, schedule refresh, schedule refresh. And that's what you need to click on. It's as simple as that. Click on schedule refresh, click on the icon. Okay, you click on the icon and it shows us, um, it shows us, it shows me, um, you know, if you scroll down here, it shows me refresh. Okay, it shows me um, refresh, okay? But you can see it's grayed out currently. So you might experience this as well, okay? You can see it is currently grayed out, okay? It's currently grayed out. So all you need to do is, it says, um, for here, it's, you, you know, you can see a pop-up here, fail to test the connection to your data source. Please retry your credentials. So I'll just simply click on edit credential, okay? Edit credential, okay? Edit credential. Um, privacy level setting to the data source. I can just say uh, public. I can just put it as public and then click on sign in. I'll click on sign in. So in case if you have your refresh grid out, this is what you need to do. All right. So all I need to do is I'll select one of my accounts. Uh, I'll, I'll select this particular one. Okay, this first one. I'll select that. All right. And then it says Power BI desktop already has some access. I'll simply click on continue. I'll click on continue. Once I click on continue, um, it's gonna sign me in. Okay, Google Sheets data source updated. All right, Google Sheets data source updated. And now um, I can click on refresh. Okay. Okay. So okay. So the first one has been done. Let's do for the second one. Okay. Let's do for the second one. All right. So I'll click on this. Right, and then just repeat the same process. Now, the reason why we have two, let me explain so that you don't get confused, all right? Let me explain why we have two in the first place. The reason why we have two of them here is because, remember, I had already created the report, and then I showed you how to import, you know, the, the form one more time. Do you remember that we did that? I showed you how to import the form one more time. So that's why it's showing us two Google Sheets here. So ordinarily, you would have just one, and you have to do this once, just once. So but I'll just click on the second edit, um, edit um, credentials, so that I can, you know, just perform the same steps that I did previously. Same set of steps that I did previously. Click on that first um, email, and yeah, scroll down. You see continue. Simply click on continue, and um, that would sign me in. And now you can see. Google Sheets data updated, and you, you see that yellow bar disappears. So now I can happily click on um, refresh, okay? Refresh, and now I can switch this on so that I then define how this data is refreshed. I define how this data is refreshed. Now, you can see you have refresh frequency. So you can either choose to re refresh it weekly or daily, okay? Weekly or daily so let me choose daily okay i'll choose daily you can choose your time zone all right so i think um, let's pick all right so let's pick a time zone um i'll just pick uh what time zone should we pick now i'll just pick utc plus one let's pick west central africa okay and depending on your time zone, you can pick, you know, uh, let's assume you're in Amsterdam, for example. You can just pick Amsterdam, okay? And then, you know, you see um, time, time, add another time. So I'll click on add another time, okay? And I can specify the time of the day, daily, that I want this report to refresh, okay? So let's say work starts 9 a.m., all right, but you want this thing to go live, to refresh before 9 a.m. So you can set it to maybe like 8.30, 8.30 a.m. 
All right, so that um, by 8.30, uh, you know, the refresh is initiated so that you're sure that by 9 o'clock, you're seeing the, um, you know, the latest data, okay? And you can add another another time again, maybe um, during break, during lunch, okay? You want it to refresh again, all right? Or at the end of the day, you want it to refresh, maybe, you know, work ends at 6 p.m. You know, you can set that to 6 p.m. And once you set that, you simply click on apply. Simply click on apply. You simply click on apply. Now, when you click on apply, it says budget versus actual refresh schedule updated. Your updates to the budget versus actual refresh schedule changes have been saved. And that's simply what you need to do. So it means that anybody can now come to this report. Rest assured that whenever, wherever, Whenever and wherever they are seeing or looking at this report, they are seeing the latest information with no, no human, no manual intervention. Okay. Literally, no manual intervention. All they have to do from the different locations is to fill up the, the, the form and that's all. Okay. They fill up the form and that is literally all. Okay. So, can we see that, guys? Did you, did you learn one or two things today? Let me know if you learned one or two things today before I bring back my slide and you know walk us through how you can also what you need to learn the basics. This is an advanced um, you know project. Okay, like I said, straight off my uh, my own personal experience. So you want to know how to do this? What do, what are the basic things you need to know? Okay. What are the basic things you need to know beforehand to be able to do all of this on your own, all right? Okay, so I want to see your comments. Okay, fantastic. I see comments from um, you know, quite a number of people. Destiny, Murupeola, Demola, Boat Power, Ugo Chiku, Elliot, Catherine, 20 new things, too much info for one day. All right. <laughs> So I, I didn't even do it step by step, okay? Because it's quite an advanced, you know, project. But something you can absolutely do, provided that you know some basic things. So what are those basic things that you, those are the things that I want to, you know, tell you or um, show to you now, okay? Those are the things I want to show to you now. Those are the things I want to show to you right now. All right, so I'll just go ahead and present my screen. So I want to see your comments. So we talked about the future process. This was where I had already discarded, you know, the um the diagram I showed. You know, the diagram I showed just before I went into Power BI. That was what I showed you. Now. Okay, right from you know creating just a Google form, you're able to. I was able to streamline, you know, the kind of data that I get. Get, even if I'm getting them from diverse regions. From there, I went on to extract the Google Sheets, uh, the Google Sheets version of the form. And then I got the link of the Google Sheets, connected my Power BI to the, um, um, to it. Somebody saying share more lights, share more lights. I believe it's share more say Share more lights on data modeling as part of the basics. Yeah, you like I said, you see all of the basics. So I'm going to literally tell you what you need to learn, how long you need to learn it for, to be able to do what I've done, what I've done so far. Okay. So and these are the kind of projects you 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 experience in class. Okay, from end to end, and it may take you two weeks. Okay, because you're a beginner, you're starting out to you know be able to build this, or you would eventually build it under the guidance of um a facilitator like myself. So but I want to ask you, if you want to become a financial analyst, what do you think that reason would be? Why? Why do you think you would personally want to become a financial analyst? Just type it in the chat. Why would you want to become a financial analyst? Why would you want to become a financial analyst? So my own reason is very simple. I'm not shy to say it because of money. Okay. Can we also automate such data with CSV files? Absolutely. All the different data sources so you connect. You saw me show how to connect it, right? That you can possibly connect to other, right? You can actually do automation. 
Okay, so probably once you've gotten those are just data sources, right? A CSV file is just data sources and all that. Okay. Okay. Okay, somebody's asked answering my question. Luckily, thank you for that. So why do you want to become a financial analyst? I want to make data easier to interpret. And you want to do that and be rewarded as well. Don't forget, once you make things easier for people, you also want to be rewarded doing so, correct? You want to be rewarded. Any course of training on data engineering, it's absolutely Leonard. All right, and you see them, I'll, I'll, I'll share all those. Okay, fantastic. So let's keep our reasons coming in. But whatever reason you have within you, which is your personal drive to becoming a financial analyst, you need to know how to become a financial analyst. You need to know how to become a financial analyst. Okay, it's not enough to know what you want to become, but you need to know how. Exactly, because they are like you, okay? Finance pays well, okay? So there is money in finance. <laughs> All right. To be on top of my finance career game. Exactly. Fantastic blessing for bringing this up. In this particular organization I worked with, we had financial professionals, people who had, you know, decades of experience in the financial space. But what separated me from them was analytics. Analytics. That was the difference. That was the game changer. Okay, that was the game changer. You create this solution and, you know, just imagine how, how you know, how much you'll be paid um, if you get a client that has this, you know, a very similar problem to this, okay? you gladly, you know, you gladly name your price. So but how do you become a financial analyst? How do you become a financial analyst? Very simple. First, the financial analyst, you know, is that person who goes into, in, into an organization and, you know, like you guys said, you want to interpret data, you know, you want to be at the helms of affairs, you want to make money. The financial analyst is that person who goes into the organization and supports decision-making using financial data. Simple, simple. So your own purview as a financial analyst is you focus more on the financial aspect of any business. Any business out there, you know, would cut across several aspects, okay? You have people, okay? You have people, um, that's not to spell people, okay? I beg your pardon. Um, that's people, okay? You have, you also have, you know, um, you also have technology, okay? And then you have processes. These are the different aspects of the business, right? Now, to be able to keep all of all this running, you need money as a business. If you want to sustain operation, you need money. Okay? So now that money aspect of all of these three aspects, you as the financial analyst, you as the financial analyst will be the one in charge of telling the organization, oh, this is where you are in terms of financial. Oh, you have a target for the year. You are so and so percent close to your target. Are you on track? No, you are not on track. The target for this month was to be at 50. I mean, the target for the first quarter was to be at 25%. We are currently at 23.5%. So we need to push. Okay? We need to push. All right? So this, you, you are the one that is going to be, you know, in charge of building systems to ensure that the organization is well informed when it comes to their financial data. But like I said, what do you need to learn? What do you need to learn to become a financial analyst? All right? All right? What do you need to learn? But mind you, mind you, okay, first of all, you need to know that if, as a financial analyst, your average salary in the UK is 51,000 pounds. In the UK, 51,000 pounds. Full-time role as a financial analyst. In Canada, you're looking at close on 70,000 Canadian dollars. And in the US, you are looking at 74,000 US dollars. Okay. And this is just, you know, um, for these locations. Um, you don't see for other locations, you can go to you can go to Glassdoor. Glassdoor, I'll show you a bit of what Glassdoor looks like in a bit. All right. So what do you need to learn? As a financial analyst, you need to be, you need to be very conversant with you know problem 
solving. Problem solving. You need to learn problem solving. All right? Problem solving. If I ask everybody, oh, do you think you have problem solving skills? We'll likely say yes. But have you heard, if I now follow up and say, have you heard of the Chris DM framework? Have you heard of, you know, the fishbone technique of solving a problem? Have you heard of, um, you know, the root cause analysis? Root analysis? Um, you know, uh, you know, so many other um, frameworks of solving problems, the Lean Six Sigma, where the DMAIC framework falls under. You know, all these are frameworks that you need to deeply understand, okay? And possibly also see how professionals apply these different frameworks to solving problems, okay? Because your approach to solving problems um, is also defined. Now, once you've understood what solving a problem is, which is the essence of your own um, existence as a financial analyst, right? Some of you said, oh, you want to solve problems, you want to create solutions, you want to uncover insights, you want to make sense of data. That is part or part of problem solving problems. So you will understand what the different techniques you can solve a problem involves. And then you go to Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Excel. Okay, Microsoft Excel. Now, you learn how to use Microsoft Excel as a financial analyst, okay? Then, we use Power BI today. I showed you what Power BI can do. And like I said, this is just a tip of the iceberg when, it, when you, you know, it comes to Power BI can do, okay? And then, when you learn Power BI, then you learn what we call SQL, SQL. SQL means Structured Query Language. Structured Query Language. Structured query language. Structured query language, um, you know, this is used, okay? This is where most organizations store their data. So just like in your homes, you have reservoirs that store water, you know, organizations also have reservoirs, I'll call them reservoirs, okay? Just for the purpose of today's session. Organizations have what we call reservoirs, that also store their data. Now, you as a financial professional, financial analyst, you need to be able to interact with the, the reservoir. We call them databases, right? Databases. You need to be able to communicate with this reservoir called databases, okay? In a language it understands so that you can be able to retrieve data from this reservoir. Now, what's that language? It is structured query language, SQL. And guess what? It's one of the simplest languages you can ever learn. Why is that? Because it mimics your natural language. Okay, select means select. Where means where. Um, um, group by means group by. Max means max. Okay, so all you need to do is to learn the syntax. And it is super easy to learn. Okay, and you're going to be learning not just theoretically, but practically, all right? Under the guidance of an experienced professional, okay, like myself. So then once you learn all of this, which is the data analytics aspect, okay? This is like, look at it, look at this first aspect as the data analysis aspect, okay? Problem solving, Excel, Power BI, and SQL. These are the data analysis aspects of your financial analysis, okay? And then you then go into some fundamentals, okay? Some fundamentals that generally cover investment banking and, um, you know, corporate finance, okay? Somebody's asking, is the reservoir of database uh, public for everyone? Okay, um, so organization set it up and you'll be given access to this. So it's not public, okay? SQL databases aren't public, so they are secured. And that's why you, me and you cannot see the back end, um, the data set, the databases of companies like Apple, companies like Microsoft, you know, and so on and so forth. So you would have to be an employee within the organization to be able to gain access, all right? But the good thing is that, um, like I said, what we offer here is practical, you know, examples. So, give you access to databases. We, in fact, will show you how to create one yourself, okay? So that's what you'll be doing, 
All right. So once you've done all of that, you go into the financial fundamentals. Okay, accounting fundamentals, financial analysis, financial modeling, okay, valuation, sensitivity and scenario analysis allows you to you know um, look at different financial scenarios within your organization. And I call this the icing on the on the cake. Chat GPT, chat GPT for analytics. So we are um we are we are going into a time of AI. So you need to start to get yourself conversant with tools like ChatGPT, how you can both use it for, or use it as a productivity tool, as well as, um, you know, um, a learning tool, being that you are also a beginner. Okay, now, um, somebody's asking, can data, we'll get to that, we'll get to all of that, okay? I can see your questions in the chat, we'll get to all of that. Now, you're going to do this within four months. Back in the days, during my time, okay? It will take you nothing less than one year of seriousness and dedication, okay, to be able to become a data analyst or a financial analyst or even get into the textbook to start with. But because we are experienced, we've seen the obstacles, we know what you need to do, we know that aspect you need to focus on to become a financial analyst. The program is for four months, four months, three months, you have your life classes, okay? And you have one month of growth internship. So within these three months, this is where you have the training wheels on. You know, when you are learning to ride a bicycle, you have training wheels, right? So you have your training wheels on for the stretch of three months and the following one month for your internship, you take out the training wheels and this is where you now start to really put your own skills to the test, okay? you put your skills to the test. And your classes hold every weekend on Saturdays and Sundays. Your classes typically hold on Saturdays and Sundays. But it's blended. It's a blended style of training. Why did I say so? So on Saturdays, you have a live class, an instructor-led live class. So you have a professional like myself in class with you on Saturdays from 11 a.m. West African time to 2 p.m. West African time. Okay, so depending on your time zone, you can actually join this class at this set time. Okay, so and we have more stability with the West African time. That's why, you know, we're using the West African time as a reference point. All right, so um, you have your classes at this time on Saturdays for three hours, okay? And on Sundays, you have what we call yourself paced watch me do it videos self-paced watch me do it videos now these are bite-sized short videos you know short couple of videos that um you know we send out to you on sundays and you it prepares you for um it prepares you for you know the coming class so before you actually meet with the professional saturdays you are expected to have gone through your own self pace, so it's at your own pace. Okay, we make it available to you as early as Sundays, so you can go through it over the course of the week during your free time, you know, and then you practice along when necessary. All right, you practice alongside, and you know, you are able to get prepared for the class on Saturday. Okay, so it's a blended training, um, you know, program, and on top of this, so let's say you're watching your watch me do it videos. On Sunday or over the week, and you get stuck somewhere. We also have what we call dropping sessions. It typically happens on Wednesdays towards the evenings. Okay. Now, on Wednesdays, you'd have somebody on the call put you through whatever issues you experienced, you know, over the course of the week. All right. Over the course of the week. And if you had something from the previous class on Saturday that, or maybe when you were, you know, going over what you learned. You know, you had some additional questions. You can absolutely bring that to that session and you'd have it. You have a professional there. Someone in class will be on the call, will put you through that specific aspect. But that's not all. That's not all, okay? You need to know that learning financial analysis or getting into this particular program opens you up to several career paths. Somebody is asking, can I... As a data analyst, can I apply as a financial? Can I apply to financial analyst jobs? As a financial analyst, can you apply to, you know, what kind of jobs can you apply to? 
you can apply to. The, and this is just a few, okay? Risk analyst, portfolio manager, financial advisor, investment analyst, credit analyst, corporate finance analyst, compliance analyst, data analyst. Yes, data analyst, because you have the same skill set as a data analyst, so you can definitely apply to data analyst roles. So it gives you, a, you have like a double-edged sword, okay? So because you are you passing through this program, even if you had no prior knowledge in the financial space or you're interested in the financial space, you know, you'd go over some financial fundamentals during the program that would, you know, fine-tune your um, expertise to the financial space. And because you also have data analyst um, skill set, you can also apply to data analyst roles. Okay. So but um, yeah, this I just talked about this. Okay, the four, your four months learning program that uh, you have, you know, three months of live classes, like I said, projects, completely project based. And then we'll take out the training wheels for another one month where you go through a virtual internship. Okay. And then um, you have, you, you, like I said, your classes are, you know, instructor led. I mentioned the time for your classes and, you know, the watch me do it video, self paced watch me video which prepares you for the next class so i won't dwell on that but that's not all that's not all right that is not all i want you to get a job at the end. i want you to succeed in the job and what we've done here is to put a three-layered step how do we do this in layer one okay we help you set up CV. Tell you how to tailor your CV to suit the job room like to. Review your CV if you have one. If you don't have one, we tell you how to set up one. Set up one for you. Okay. Now you also you also need to be you, you also need to have what we call social proof. So you're you you want to become a data, I mean you want to become a financial analyst or even a data analyst or a data engineer. Some people were asking for data engineering. Okay. You want to get into tech, you have to have a LinkedIn page. If you go to LinkedIn now and type Mohamed Suleiman, type my name, you can see my name at the bottom of my video. If you go there and type Mohamed Suleiman, you'll see me. You'll see me. Right? You can even add analytics to it, Mohamed Suleiman analytics. You'll see my profile. And that serves as a proof, okay, as a social proof for myself. All right? So recruiters can easily reach out to me when. Um, they are looking for, for um, you know, professionals, okay? And my account is set up in such a way that, you know, and we teach you how to do all of this too. So when you're searching for data analysts or senior data analysts specifically, you know, your profile would probably come up, one of the top profiles that would come up um, so that recruiters can easily find you on LinkedIn. That's not all. We teach you how to, optimize your upwork um your upwork profile so um i'll just take us to let me just show you what upwork looks like for those of you who have never heard of upwork so upwork is a platform where you can um you know look for jobs okay so i just typed upwork and i went to find the best freelance jobs so you can actually work as a freelancer you can work as a freelancer on Upwork, and you do that from the comfort of your home. I know so many people, all right, including myself. Okay, I had a, one of my first gigs came on Upwork as a data analyst. Remember, I said I transitioned into becoming a data analyst myself, a financial analyst myself, tech bro myself. All right, I transitioned from the um, engineering background to becoming, you know, a tech professional. So this was the platform where I felt. So if you if you say what was my what's my first love? That is Upwork. Okay. So, but I'll just scroll down and so that you see the kind of jobs that you can get. So I'll just scroll. This is A, that is B. So I'll go to F so that you can see. This is F. Can we see these guys? I'll just cancel this. Can you see this? It says financial analyst. Financial analyst. So people tell me, what do we have? Do we have um, you know? job roles as financial analyst. This is Upwork. That is financial analyst right there, okay? 
and you can actually get jobs as financial. Look at this person now. They are looking for a financial control senior specialist assisting for financial control and so on and so forth. Look at what they are paying. It's a fixed price posted two days ago. This was also posted two days ago. And there are a bunch of them. Some of them pay per hour. So, but how do you land this rules? There are some, you know, nuances that you need to learn. Okay. Um, and that's what we would put in. Um, you know, we we have packed in this um program. I right? also have some other some other um uh, you know platforms, for example, built in. Okay, built in. You have built in, okay, built in. You can look for remote jobs. So you want to work from the comfort of your own. Just go to built in. Okay, built in. So top remote jobs. So I'll just you know go to uh their page and search for search for uh, financial analyst. Can you see even without finishing the finishing um you know what I'm typing, financial analyst, right? I'll just click on financial analyst. Okay, and guys, that is it. Financial analyst rules, a bunch of them. This was posted four hours ago by CrowdStrike. They are looking for a remote financial analyst. This was posted four hours ago. Okay, you can see their employee size. You can see the average, I mean, the range, not the average, the salary range between 55K to 90K dollars. Annually, look at the amount of years of experience they are looking for. And design is the, the program is designed in such a way that you would ask, Oh, how do I they ask for three years of experience? How you know do you um how do you how do you uh um you know get that from the program? Stay with me. Okay, you did you know all you need to do is join us and we'll walk you through that aspect. So Around different organ, uh, I mean locations, small us are in the US, small us are in Canada, small us are in Nigeria, small us are in Ghana, small of us are looking to relocate to the UK and so on. Now, that's your target location. How do you navigate the job market there? The way you navigate the job market in Canada is quite different from um uh you know in the UK or the US and so on and so forth. So we bring in experienced professionals who have navigated navigated this ropes that you are also looking to uh, pass through and then we we'll show you what and they show you what to do okay and show you guys fill in the, the um, attendance form all right so that you get um yeah so that you know we have you in our records okay so now um when you get into the program okay we, are, we urge you to apply to jobs and you get called for interviews. We prepare you for interviews, okay? We prepare you for interviews, okay? Tell you what kind of questions you should expect. How do you answer those questions? What do recruiters are expecting you to say? You can talk for five minutes and not answer the question, all right? But how do you ensure that you, 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 are, you, are, you effectively answer questions? If you're asked a question that may likely sweep you off your feet, how do you ensure that you are able to concoct something right on the top right from the top of your head you know and make it make sense to the recruiter how do you prepare effectively prepare you for your job interview how do you introduce yourself to the start with that's like the first question okay many people don't know how to effectively introduce themselves in their official setting so how do you learn how to do it we'll would walk you through all of that and also provide you with recommendation letters, and this has gone very far, helping our participants finally secure the role. So after passing the interview, um, most recruiters will ask you for a reference. We also stand as a reference for you, and we can vouch for you that oh, we what we've worked with so and so, and we, um, and this so and so has you know, um, so and so set of skills. Okay, you know, very compelling recommendation letter. That secures you the run. That's just level one. That's just level one. Level two, okay? We have our weekly mentorship sessions and on the job support. So every week, you have somebody like myself, founders of Analytics and the co founder. They, we come on board to, you know, take you through sessions like how do you introduce yourself in an interview setting? 
how do you negotiate for salaries? Myself, I'm a living testimony. I've passed through interviews, a lot of them. And I keep getting rejections after the interviews, only for me to discover that I don't have the correct negotiation, salary negotiation skill. Okay? So um, and a, and a recruiter gives you a range. Take, for example, a range from 55K. You saw the range for that particular job where I showed you on beauty. 55K to about 90K. And then you go and you say, oh, I want 90K. I want 90K, right? What do you need to bring to the table before you can ask for 90K, which is the top of that range? Okay, so my, my own policy back then was, oh, you give you give me an opportunity to choose from a range. I'm going for I'm going for it. I'm going for the highest range. But that was not the correct strategy. So do you then go for the lowest range? Do you then go for the lowest range? So if you want to get the answer to that question, this is where you get it in the weekly mentorship session. Okay, and we give you what we call on the job support. On the job support, this is where you get you get a job. We understand that you're you're you, you, you done what we asked you to do, you finally got to the job, great. So the very first project you're asked to do, and most of our, some of our, uh, you know, participants have, you know, passed through this. Okay, oh, Mohammed, I'm, as I'm speaking to you now, I have a data set in front of me. I have no clue on what to do. It's so messy. And then, you know, we, even for, you know, considering data privacy issues, you know, there, there are ways where, you know, some of the some of the information can be shared right, without breaching data privacy, and we are able to walk these participants through, walk you through, um, you know, how to what to do, pertaining to that specific job, okay, or task, and we do that with you for about one month into the job to ensure that you find your footing, and then you can take it up from there, and that's just level two, level three. And this is a new addition for the year. We are going to be guaranteeing you of one job interview, at least one job interview, one month after you have completed the training program with us. One month after completing the training program with us, we are guaranteeing you an interview. And these are so many people. I'll share this slide with you. I won't, I won't bore you. I'll go back to that first one and play one of them for you before we wrap up today. All right, these are people towing. I was the one who specifically prepared towing for this job. Okay. Um, yeah, and we have so many other team members, okay, in-house, you know, who prepared these fantastic guys, you know, who passed through our program. I also prepared, um, I was also prepared um big marts for her job interview. You know, quite a number of them who um, you know, we've been able to help get jobs uh, across all our programs. Um you know, um, yeah, I'm getting to the key now, Matthew. We'll get there soon. Okay. So now, if you're still looking for, if with all I've said so far, you still have, you are still looking for reasons why you should train with us. Let me give you, you know, some four reasons. First off, we have great, I mean, we have, we have great, um, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, track record when it comes to get, helping people get jobs. Okay. Across the globe. Number two, we bring in industry standard professionals and up to date curriculum. So I'm, I'm not going to overflow this. Okay, I'll just run through this. Okay, because I know uh, we want to learn about the fees as well. Okay, um, and it's a blended training program in such a way that it combines the best of both worlds, where you have live classes and your self paced watch me do it video, and it's a tailored session. Okay, tailored in the sense that we help you. The goal is to help you get a tech job. So it's not about learning, learning, learning. It's about learning, get a job, learning, get a job, learning, get a better job, and so on and so forth. So some of the new things we brought in um, also for 2024, for the year 2024 is we have our body mentorship where we bring people, well, some of those people who I showed on the slide, we bring them back and they'll tell you how they were able to achieve their own success. You get to ask them those burning questions that you have, and that would accelerate your own journey. Okay, we've revamped some of our internship programs across some of, across some of our um, courses, and also 
we've partnered with, sorry about that, we've partnered with, um, you know, some recruitment agencies. We've partnered with some recruitment agencies across the globe, from UK to Canada to the US to Africa, including Nigeria, you know, um, like um, Havinash, Robert Half, you know, to bring these jobs closer to our participants, okay? To bring the jobs closer to our participants. So you, you, many of you are asking, okay, Mohammed, how do I get into your program that starts on the 4th of May, 2024? Very simple, all right? Very simple. Some of us were asking about some of the other programs we offer, okay? But if you look at this first box here, okay, that is where the financial analytics program also fall in. You look closely, you see the financial analytics program right there, okay? That is it right there, amongst the others. So in case you, you are looking to enroll for, you know, the other programs. All right. So for the financial analytics program, okay, this is the full amount here, in this column. If you look here, that's the full amount. But as I speak with you now, okay, as I speak with you, for the first 20 people to register, okay, you're guaranteed, you're guaranteed, I am guaranteeing you of a 33% off right now. Right now, as we speak, as we speak a 33% off on the price, on this full price, meaning that for the financial analytics program, um, if you are paying in Canadian dollars, rather than paying Canadian dollars, I mean, rather than pay, I mean, rather than pay, um, you know, okay, let's start with Canadian dollars. So if you, rather than pay, you know, 1,125, you're paying 750. You are paying in US dollars, rather than pay 750 US dollars, you're paying 500 US dollars. And that's not all. You can pay in two installments. You can pay in two installments, right? To join the class, to start the class, to join the class, you pay $350 to start. And then you get to pay $150 to balance up one month after the training program has started. So one month into the training program, you balance up and you are good to go. So you, if you're taking this discount, that's when you have the access to pay this to this point. Okay, if you miss out on this discount, then you have to pay full amount, one-time payment of the full amount. Okay, so take my word for it. You want to register at this point in time and take advantage of this discount. Okay, if you're paying in Naira, rather than paying 900,000, you're paying 600,000. And like I said, you can pay in two installments, 100,000 to your spots and 200,000 one month after the program. All right. So, um, and that is that for the financial analytics uh, program. So, if you are looking to pay, how do you pay? You may be asking, okay, how do you pay? You see, my um, colleague, um, my colleague is in the chat, you know, pasting the that Lydia. Lydia has pasted the Lydia Capital Analytics has pasted, you know, the details and the links you need to. Um, you know, make payments. But let me show you how to do that, all right? So the link is in the chat, okay? It's the main stack link. It's the main stack link. This is the link. I'll put it in the chat myself also, just in case you're wondering where the link is. All right, so that's it in the chat. Now, if you visit that link posted by me and my team members have also posted the link as well. So if you click on that link, the main stack link, it brings you to this page, all right? It brings you to this page. Um, we're running, you know, um, IWD discounts, about 50% discounts, which recently closed, but we still have 33% discount running, okay? This is currently running and you want to take advantage of it, you know, if not for anything, for, for the fact that you are able to do that in two installments, all right? Two installments. And um, once you, you know, make payments, all you need to do is to come back here to upload your payments receipt so we can confirm your payment. You can do a bank, a direct bank transfer to any of these accounts, you know, in this link. Just come here, you know, do a bank transfer to any of these accounts um, and send us the... Um, receipts by uploading it in here. So you fill a form here 
where you would be required to also upload a payment receipt so you can confirm your payment. All right. And if you want to use your card to make online payments, fantastic. You can use your MasterCard, your Visa card, pay, you know, Google Pay, Apple Pay, you know, to make payments. All you need to do is to come here, click on the financial analytics. If you scroll here, these are all the programs that we have currently running. Um, click on financial analytics, and that takes you to the financial analytics page for you to make payments. All right. So all you need to do is all you need to do is um, you can see the price there, 600000 But I said, if you want to take advantage of the discounts, okay, you first pay a 400 amount, you know, you change this to 400000 But let me let me give you one good news again. So say, for example, you don't have 400000 now, right now, as we speak. Okay, you don't have 400000 Okay, but you can get 400000 you know, um, before the program starts. Fine. You can pay a minimum currently. You can pay a minimum of two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, so I can come here and enter two hundred and fifty thousand there. But if I enter anything less than that, okay, if I enter two hundred and forty thousand, okay, it's not gonna take it. All right, and um, the currency you pay in, you know, will be determined by your current location. So, take for example, you're in Nigeria, paying from Nigeria, you see that in naira. Okay, if you're if you're paying from Canada. You see that in Canadian dollars, um, and so on and so forth. If you are paying from Australia, you see that in AUD. Okay, so um, you want to enter the minimum amount that you can see there. You definitely see the minimum amount payable as at this point in time. Okay, and then you top this up by it means you need to top this up by 150k before the program starts. So that completes your 400,000 naira. If you're paying in naira. Um, to start a program. I'll just simply click on reserve a seat. Once I click on reserve a seat, you can see um, that is my uh, payment there. All I need to do is to enter in my name, enter in my email address, no, start, okay? So just for demo, enter in my email address and enter my phone number and hit proceed, okay? Hit proceed. Now, once you click on proceed, once you click on proceed, all right, now you need to enter in your uh, card details to make payments for, uh, you know, 250,000 um, Naira to reserve your seat. So you enter in your details and simply click on make payments. All right, so all you need to do is to um, take a screenshot of that particular, of the um, success successful payments page, and then you come back to this link, okay, and scroll back up and upload your payment receipt. So you click on upload your payment receipt, okay? And it opens up this form for you. Enter in your email. I'll enter in my email. Okay, I'll enter in my email, click on next, all right? And then um, type of payment. So if you made an initial payment, all right? That, you know, which is what we are urging you to do currently, especially, you know, being the fact that you have the opportunity, um, uh, you know, given the discount. Initial payments, let's assume I opted for initial payments. Click on initial payments, click on next, right? And then, you know, um, please note that after receiving your welcome kit, all balance payments must be made by 30th of May, meaning, um, you know, you've made first payments and, you know, this is just telling you that one month after the training program has started, you would be required to make balance payments. You agree to this and click on next. And then, um, you know, first name, you fill in the form with your first name, all right? Your last name, all right, and so on. Choose gender, click on next. So this is required. Um, so I'll just type that in. Um, so, Please provide the Gmail address that will be used to add you to the analytics Google Classroom and to attend all live classes and training programs. So enter in your Gmail that you want us to use. And then gender, I'll just select male, click on next. So I'll just, let's assume I want to use this email. All right, so click on next. And then uh, you want to read through the terms and conditions and click on this link to read the full terms and conditions, okay? And you 
consent that you've read and agreed to the terms and conditions. And um, if you don't agree, um, all you need to do is to reach us via this contact that you have here and click on next, okay? And then, you know, when did you make payment? You select the date and then you upload a screenshot of the amount you received. Once you do that, all right, you know, you also, you know, uh, tell us the mode of payment that you did, click on next and, you know, it's pretty much intuitive from here, okay? And that is all you need to do to get into the financial analytics program and any of the programs that, um, you, you know, um, of your choice. So the person that asks for data engineering, all you need to do is to click on data engineering and, you know, follow the exact same steps and you will be good. So, and that is it, okay? Um, I mean, you have, you have, you know, quite um, a number of opportunities when it comes to, you know, being um, in the tech space to even start with, not to talk of being a financial analyst in the tech space, all right? So now um, in this particular slide, I have even more testimonials, okay? There's just so many of them. So all you want to do is to get the slides, like I said, go through each and every single one of them, click on the link to listen to them, right? Click on the link below to listen to them, you know, hear from them and, um, uh, you know, we want you to see exactly how, what we have packaged for them, had benefited them as well. So, um, yeah, so that would be it for today's session. Okay, that would be it for today's session. Um, I'll just take, a couple of questions, all right? If you want to ask any question, I'll just uh, probably on share my screen. Okay, let me see. If you have a question, I'll take maybe two or three questions, all right? But we also have a QA and a session. We call it the Clarity Session. And this happens every Tuesdays. So even if you don't have the opportunity to ask your questions or you asked it today and it didn't get answered, just keep a date with us for Tuesday, and it typically happens in two time zones, all right? From 11, um, sorry, from 2 p.m. to, yeah, from 2 p.m. It happens 2 p.m. on Tuesdays, West African time, and also 11 p.m. West African time, still on Tuesdays. So depending on your time zone, one of these two sessions will be well suited to you. So you can definitely join in um, join in with us. So I'm sure you fill in the attendance form so you can get access to the link to join that session as well. So um, you have more questions, you can simply join in that session on Tuesday, ask your questions, and we will be there and happy to give you the answers that you want. Okay, but meanwhile, the discount is still running. So take advantage while you still can. So for today, just to cap today's session, I would want to take two questions, okay? At least two questions, all right? Okay, Lekon, I've asked you to mute. Yep, I've asked you to unmute, so go ahead and ask a question. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Suleiman, for this uh, insightful uh, class. Uh, just a quick one. I want to ask if um, you have a kind of uh, package for people that just want to call me for probably the practical class. I probably those people have kind of experience from, you know, several people, maybe online and stuff like that. They just want to have a little bit of practical experience. I don't know if you have a kind of program for people like that as well. A uh, very good question. Um, currently, we, we, don't, we don't have that. We used to have it in the past, okay? Um, some people would even come and say, oh, can I just attend your internship just to, you know, build my skills? We had people like that. So well, what we normally do before we get people like that um, back then was we test them. Oh, you say you know Excel, you know Power BI. So put the skills to the test, all right? And we'll even put them through a mock interview session. Okay, put them through a mock interview session. Also ask them for their timeline. In, you know, have you worked as a data analyst before? Have you worked as a financial analyst before? And, you know, what we see, you know, most of the time recurring very frequently is that these people still need some skills, some basic skills, right? 
in the space. Okay, so um, giving access to just the path, for example, just the practical class. Yes, you benefit a lot from a practical class, but if your goal is to get a job in the tech space, it's a combination of both words. Having, you know, um, you know, your technical expertise. Okay, having your technical technical expertise as well as um, um, your soft skills, that's your communication skills. Do you know how to answer questions? How do you come up confidently during an interview session? Okay, so these are these are areas where we also train people and you know joining the program in its entirety would be the best for you. Okay, so I hope I've been able to answer your question later. Okay, just give a thumbs up or just type a yes in the chat. Um, so I know I've been able to answer your question, right? So let me take one more person um, before we call it a day. Let me take one more person. Okay, fantastic, Nicole. Let me call, let me, let's, if you have a question, just raise up your hand, I'll take you. That's a pleasure, Nicole. Thanks for um, gracing today's session. All right, so I'll take one more person. And like I said, I have you know, a special Q&A session for the clarity session where that occurs on Tuesdays. And all you need to do is to fill in the attendance form, get a link to join that session. We ask, you know, that, that session is mainly for questions. Okay, Olakunle, Olakunle, put your hand up, raise up your hand, use um, the raise hand icon so that I can ask you to unmute. And then you can ask your question. Can one attend another introduction for any other field? Yes, Catherine. So we have so many master classes um, happening. We had some yesterday. We had many last week, and we still have a lot of them in store for you for the coming week. So all you simply need to do right now is to fill in the attendance form. Okay, fill in the attendance form. Um, if you have done that already, then the rest assured you get the you get you know the links to join. Um, you know some other master classes. Also follow us on our on our social media handles on Instagram at Analytics. On um, follow us on uh, YouTube. Follow us on you know Facebook and the right and the likes. You get um, access. This is how much had internet glitch. Okay, let me go back to that page so that um, you see the payment. So we currently, so it means you missed the. So it means it, it means you missed the um, you missed the the discount I discussed about and how you know going for the discounts also opens you up to making the two the two installments um the two installment opportunity that we have okay um, just one second yeah so this is it okay so i explained that um this is the financial analytics program okay so this is the full payment but we currently have a 33% um discount on all our programs and instead of paying $750, for example, for the financial analytics program, all right, all you need to do is to pay $500. And if you are going for this discount, it then opens this second door for you, which is having the opportunity to pay in two installments. All right, so to get into the class, all you need to do is to pay $350, all right, if you are paying in dollars, uh, depending on your location, you pay $350, get your foot into the class, all right, and then one month after the training program has started, you then balance up with $150, okay? And also, if at this point in time, you don't have $350, or if you're paying in error, you don't have up to 400,000 400, um, error right now, 
and but you have that before the 30th of April for the end of this month, then you can pay um a minimum of 250,000 naira. Okay, by using this link, pay a minimum of 250,000 naira, and then you balance that up before the program starts. Okay, you balance that up before the program starts. Okay, so and that helps you, you know, offset. So it's more or less like you're paying in three installments, okay, effectively. So you want to leverage that opportunity. Only people who are going for the discounted price would have the opportunity to pay in two installments. If you're going for the full amount, then it's a one-time payment, and that is it. All right, so I, I hope this um, answers your question. Okay, okay, Olakunle, um, okay, you, let me look for you chat so that I can ask you for a minute. Yeah. Okay. Ola Kunle, you can I'm asking you to unmute. I'm not sure why. Okay, go ahead and um, unmute now and speak to me. Ask a question then we call it today on that note. So um, good evening to you sir and to everyone in the group. Yeah good evening I think your voice is a bit low. I can hear you speaking, but I can barely hear you. So I don't know. You may want to. Okay. Can, can you hear me now? Sir? Yes. It's much better now. Okay. I really want to appreciate you for uh, taking time to make these things very explicit to us. It's um, really very um, helpful. I don't know. My question is, do you have a physical like a physical class where one can come and uh, run this program outside of um you know linking of online okay fantastic question fantastic question all right so for this specific program that i've showed you on the screen okay yes, yes. yeah it's 100 percent virtual meaning 100 percent online okay but what we also do is um, we you can reach out to us, okay? Reach out to us, especially if you have, you know, you have, if you can take care of, you know, the logistics people, right? You can reach out to us. We can make ourselves available. We have teams, team members scattered over the world. We can make ourselves available to your group and train you at your own physical location. Okay, so it's something that we also do. You can, you know, easily reach out to us um, via uh, inquiries at canalytics.com. I mean, dot org, rather, I beg your pardon. Inquiries at canalytics.org. Okay, so okay. let us know you have a large group and you're looking, you're looking to, uh, you specifically need a physical, you know, training. All right, we can work that out with you. But to individuals, um, what we do currently is the full online class. And um, almost everything is going online. Even the jobs you are looking, those high paying jobs, most of them are online. Okay, so um, it's in a bit to start to, you know, uh, get you used to the remote, the remote, the remote, uh, you know, yeah, the remote setting, the remote world. And also, I mean, it's a, log it's a logistic, um, I'll say it's a logistic hell to come up with physical locations and still be able to reach people and help people across the globe at the same time. So, yeah, so that's the reason why we have it as a That's fine, sir. I'll, I'll keep in touch. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank okay, you so, so much. Yeah, it's a pleasure. All right, so I think, um, that will be it for today. I hope you guys learned a whole lot. For those of us that stick to you this time, um, well done, guys. Um, it was amazing having you guys. I'm sure you were excited having you as well. Okay, so till Tuesday, um, when we meet in the clarity session where you get to ask questions, I mean, details, um, it will be a goodbye from my own. Uh, cheers, guys.